Good morning, guys. I'll try not to cut off my head. There we go. So we left off as Macbeth was getting ready to go to war. This was after his tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow speech. Um, after Lady Macbeth had died and he said she should have died hereafter. And tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace, which is one of those sort of almost always timely, <laughs> timely, because get it, because the whole thing's about time, right? It's one of those very timely uh, speeches, but it's almost always timely. Like, particularly right now, we start to think about, oh, uh, we're, we're marching along and who cares? And, oh, we're just stuck in this petty pace right now. And you might especially feel this way right now. But, um, but then he goes ahead and he, he arms up anyway, right? He's getting ready for this battle anyway. Uh, he says, um, he gets word that Burnham Wood is marching toward Dunsinane. And, and he says, all right, get my, get my, uh, armor for me. Ring the alarm bell, blow wind, come rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. At least we're going to go down fighting. Certainly not the first time you've ever heard that. Sorry, this is my cat that's sitting on my lap and she's sort of up and down. All right. So here we go. Drum and colors enter Malcolm Seward Macduff and their army with the bows. Now near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. <laughs> You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon what else remains to do, according to our order. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight, let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath, those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. <laughs> So now we're into scene seven. Scene seven, on the battlefield, Macbeth kills young Seward, the son of the English commander. After Macbeth exits, Macduff arrives in search of him. Dunsinane Castle has already been surrendered to Malcolm, whose forces have been strengthened by deserters from Macbeth's army. So what's gonna happen here is Malcolm and his army starts to attack and Macbeth, uh, the people working for Macbeth, we already said mouth honor only. And we already said um, they follow him only because they have to, because he's their, their boss. But as soon as a stronger army comes along, all these people jump ship and are ready to go. They're ready to be like, yep, I'll, I'll go with that guy because everybody hates Macbeth. Um, Remember, we said that there's nobody who actually loves him. They just lesser hate him. Here's what happens when your army lesser hates you. They jump ship and they go to the attacking army. And this is where Macbeth is left. Page 181 stuff. They have tied me to a stake. I cannot fly, but bear like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear, or none. <laughs> what is thy name? Thou Young be afraid Seward. to hear it. No, though thou callst thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. <laughs> the devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No nor more fearful. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakst. They fight, and young Seward is slain. Killed. Thou wast born of woman. But swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn, brandished by man that's of a woman born. So we would kind of think that Macbeth at this point would would learn that all of these prophecies that he were get, he was given to sort of assuage his fears that something would happen. Those three prophecies: one, um, be wary of of Macduff, 
Beware Macduff. Uh, two was No Woman, No Man of Woman Born. And the three was Don't Worry Until Dun- uh, until uh, Burnham Wood Comes to Dunsinane. Well, you would think that after Burnham Wood literally marched up to Dunsinane, he might not hold so tightly to his prophecy. But we know how these uh, tragic heroes go. Um, we We know what happens when they receive their prophecies when they push too hard, when they misread everything out of their own. Well, in this case, it's not so much hubris as it was with Oedipus. In this case, it's it's blind, raging ambition, um, which he had a little bit of, but which certainly Lady Macbeth stoked the flames of. Alarms, enter Macduff. That way the noise is. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou beest slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. I cannot strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their staves. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge I sheathe again undeeded. There thou shouldst be. By this great clatter, one of greatest note seems bruited. Let me find him fortune, and more I beg not. So this is a very, uh, we said that Macduff had a different idea of, of manliness and man, oh my, the hand looks giant, um, a different, uh, idea of manliness and manhood. And he is saying that he is going to slay Macbeth. He's going to be the one that kills Macbeth, um, or his wife and children's ghosts won't be put to rest. If somebody else kills Macbeth, then Macduff can't show his face. He can't, he can't, um, consider himself and, and his, and his, um, revenge taken, right? He cannot have avenged his, his wife and children if somebody else kills Macbeth. So certainly someone's going to kill Macbeth is, is the idea. Um, and he says, he even says, I, I can't strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their staves. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill Macbeth's army. These people don't even want to be here. So, um, he's going to make sure he kills Macbeth or he'll never take his sword out. So he's sort of marching through this whole battle, not really killing anybody because he's like, no, these people don't deserve to die. Just Macbeth, just that guy. So he's saying, um, fortune, help me find him. Um, guide, he's, he's sort of calling on the, the higher powers, the powers that be in a very, very different way than Macbeth did. And, and he's saying, just let me find this one target that that will solve everything really enter malcolm and seward this way my lord the castle's gently rendered the tyrant's people on both sides do fight the noble thanes do bravely in the war the day almost itself professes yours and little is to do <laughs> we have met with foes that strike beside us enter sir the castle so th- that's it. They took the castle um, and the lines. The castle's gently rendered, right? The tyrant's people on both sides do fight. So that's it. The the castle, they didn't put up a fight. They gave it right to him. They didn't really have to fight much. And now they're they're fighting side by side. Okay, enter, uh, scene eight, enter Macbeth. Macduff finds Macbeth, who is reluctant to fight with him because Macbeth has already killed Macduff's whole family and is sure of killing Macduff too if they fight. When Macduff announces that he is not, strictly speaking, a man born of a woman, having been ripped prematurely from his mother's womb, then Macbeth Macbeth is afraid to fight. He fights with Macduff only when Macduff threatens to capture him and display him as a public spectacle. Macduff kills Macbeth, cuts off his head, and brings it to Malcolm. With Macbeth dead, Malcolm is now king and gives new titles to his loyal supporters. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound. Turn. This is Mac- Macduff. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. Have 
no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. Thou losest labor. As easy mayest thou the entrenchant air with thy keen sword impress as make me plead. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Spare thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Accursed be that tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these juggling fiends no more believe that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted upon a pole, and under it, here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, and to be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham would become to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. Before my body, I throw my warlike shield, Lay on Macduff, and damned be him that first cries, Hold! Enough! They exit fighting, alarms. They enter fighting, and Macbeth is slain. Macduff exits, carrying off Macbeth's body. Retreat and flourish. Uh, enter, with, enter with drum and colors, Malcolm, Seward, Ross, Thanes, and soldiers. As we look to the language that led us up here, so, uh, these ju- he says, lines 23, and, these, and be these juggling fiends no more believed that palter with us in a double sense, right? Remember, we talked about double, um, and it started with fair is foul, foul is fair, right? It started with that, um, already that double meaning, that um, equivocating, right? Um, and Macduff telling him, yield thee, coward, and you'll be the, the gaze and show of the time because Macbeth says, I'm not going to fight you. And Macduff certainly does say, we'll have thee as our rarer monsters are, painted upon a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant, right? So that's the only thing that gets Macbeth to fight with Macduff at this point because he knows uh, he can be vanquished by, that's the cat. He knows he can be vanquished by Macduff because Macduff was not technically of woman born. He was, again, untimely ripped. Um, and he says, fine, we'll go, we'll fight. And and damned be him, that first cries hold enough. So now we have uh, Malcolm, who now we already know the castle's rendered. And now we know that Mac- Macbeth has died at the hands of Macduff, right? <coughs> I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Some must go off, and yet by these I see so great a day as this is cheaply bought. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man, the which no sooner had his prowess confirmed in the unshrinking station where he fought, but like a man he died. Then he is dead. Aye, and brought off the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Had he his hurts before? Aye, on the front. Why then, God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish them to a fairer death. And so his knell is no. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more. They say he parted well and paid his score, and so God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. The way Seward Seward, um, takes the news of his son passing is very, very unlike the way that uh, Macduff hears of his family's passing. And there's, while there's no 
sort of wonderful uh, way to hear of this. The the difference is uh, Seward saw, get to, got to see his son come into his manhood. This was his, this was his first trial of manhood, his first war, his first battle. Um, and he, and he fought, he went down fighting. He tried to, to do his best. And so now he calls him God's soldier and Malcolm, um, the one who told Macduff to put his sorrows aside so that he can fight is actually the one telling Seward, you know, you can, you can be more sorrowful about this and, and we're going to, we're going to mourn him with you. And he says, no, no, he paid his, he paid his debt. And, and God is now the one that he is with. Uh, and so here he ha there's comfort in this for, for Seward to know that his son died well. And this is not the first time you'll, you'll hear of this. If you haven't watched enough war movies or Braveheart, um, then you might not have heard this idea. But um, he died well, according to Seward. So here comes uh, Enter Macduff with Macbeth's head. King, for so thou art. Behold, where stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl that speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, Hail. King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Schoon. So we have uh, Malcolm saying, kind of not unlike his father, not unlike King Duncan, saying um, this great flourish of, of welcome and joy to the people who have, who have uh, not only been loyal, but who have been sent away because they all were, were worried about uh, the tyranny of Macbeth. Um, and he says, that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. Lines 85 and down. We will perform in measure, time, and place because now we have the time to do this. We will perform in measure. We'll, we will perform everything to its to its fullest and finest and um, and the right place. We'll, we will ble we'll be now where we belong. Um, and he's made everybody earls, uh, which is a new title for Scotland. And he says, so thanks to all at once and to each one. So I thank you all as a group, but then each of you individually, I, I thank you as well, whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone. Now we know that Scone is the, Scone is the, uh, the place where the Scottish kings are crowned and the place to which Macduff had refused to go when Macbeth was being crowned king. So... If you have any questions, uh, we are posting a, a Schoology discussion group for any questions you have about this that will remain open until 1230. So please go ahead there and, and ask any questions you have. And if you need anything else, uh, always reach out via email. Please remember to email both myself and Ms. Robertson so that uh, between the two of us, we can take care of you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, try to get some fresh air, even if you just open a window. Uh, go for a walk. Um, I also posted my daily journal for you. I'm doing a virtual day journal, uh, handwritten most days. Some days I might vlog, I'm not sure. But um, let's do this, guys. Have a great day. <laughs>